So, my name is Matt Padwick. I'm the centre director here. I've been here for 12 years in total. Um, I first came here on retreat and um, then when I finished retreat I wanted to stay and I was a retreat attendant, so helping other people who went into retreat. And then slowly I did just about every job here until they needed um, someone to take hold of the overview, so that's what I do now. Uh, in terms of what the, the centre is, um, it's a Tibetan Buddhist retreat centre. The spiritual di director is Sogyal Rinpoche, who is the author of the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, which is widely acclaimed in terms of you know spiritual books. Um, I think it's been translated into more than 30 languages, and there's more than 2 million copies in print. So it's really found a niche. It's very relevant um, to the modern world, to men and women living you know, modern lives. And this centre is a place where people who want to learn to meditate can come. Actually, you can come here if you just want to enjoy the view, relax and unwind. You can come here. There are holiday cottages and a hostel. But we also run daily meditation classes for people who want to join those, just to get them, get people started um, to how meditation can benefit them in their, in their daily life. And then also a year-round programme of weekend retreats, so people who want to come down here for the weekend, learn meditation or loving kindness. We also have a spiritual care program which is applying these these teachings of wisdom and compassion to um, health care situations or uh, for, so for professional caregivers uh, to help them in their life to be more um, to find the capacity to do their job and to find the empathy to do their job in the way that they'd like to do it because it's so demanding. And then also spiritual care is for people who are living with illness or perhaps with bereavement to come and to, and to use these um, teachings and practices as like a toolkit, if you like, to apply to their own situation to help them um, come to terms with a new situation or to process emotions and feelings. Yeah, if we're talking about um, dying and death, um, of course it's going to happen to it's going to happen to all of us. The only thing we don't know is is when and how. Um, and I think maybe coming here, you would look a little bit more at your life and at your death and how you want to live your life and and prepare for dying, and not at all in a morbid way, because actually, if you are ready for death, it means you're living well. Um, and I think we probably, all of us, know examples of people who have, who have died um, in an inspiring way, in the sense that they were ready, they were peaceful, and it left us feeling very inspired, um, confident, hopeful, good. And yet we've also known the other extreme, where people um, can be very distressed, um, in a lot of pain, very confused and, and fearful, and that also has ripples. Um, so Sogyal Rinpoche says about places like this, about the Tibetan Buddhist teachings, he would say, you know, what are we doing? We're finding meaning in life and hope in death. And for me that, that encapsulates a lot because if you have found meaning in life, then you, you, know, you probably will die well. And if you die well, it probably is because you've, you've found meaning in life. We do hear an, a really tremendously inspiring stories that make you believe that actually um, there's a lot going on here that is unseen um, and that death and dying is, a, is perhaps a, a hopeful place as well. It's definitely, um, I heard it described once as, as the crossroads to eternity. You know, you sort of make your, it, it, it's tremendous potential, uh, tremendous possibilities, um, if only we're able to take them and it's like during our life is the time to um, to prepare and learn, ready for the for whatever's next. I guess you have to believe there's something next. Uh, for me, it's not difficult because our life maybe it's a hundred years we live, but you know the history of the world and the future of the world is eons in either direction. If it were that re if you do believe in reincarnation, if then you know this is just a tiny hair's breadth of the complete whole. You know. So why dismiss everything that's gone before and why live your life as if there's nothing in the future, you know?